Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the nitty, the gritty, the lies, and the truths behind Grease. So many people have been asking me about Grease. I, while I'm not a fan, I still have to go ahead and tell you guys the whole truth, because it's a whole lot of lies about Grease, and it's about time that we dive down into it. Any necessary links, all that are always in the description box. Diving into this, I feel like there are a lot of misnomers, mistruths, straight up lies when it comes down to hair grease, and especially because you've got so many people on YouTube that are natural hair gurus or hair gurus, but not hairstylists, licensed hairstylists, trichologists, cosmetology educators, any of that. Of those, I am a licensed cosmetologist, a licensed cosmetology instructor as well. I literally teach hair for a living. This is my life. I eat, sleep, breathe hair. It's probably an my food because that's how much I eat hair. It's everything. <laughs> Getting on into the ups and the downs of Greece. First, let me explain to you what Greece essentially is. Most of them are based with a petroleum-based substance. That is petroleum, as in petrol, as in derived from gasoline. That being said, uh, the same thing that fuels your vehicle and provides the oil and all that is the same substance that they're then maneuvering or, or reconstructing in a fashion to make it safer for the skin, of course, and for the hair. But it is that same key substance that is providing the oiliness and all that to it. Now, what grease is, is an excellent sealant. What grease is not is a moisturizer. Now, let's put it like this. And I always like to give it in definition to the body first and then to the hair. So if, let's say for instance, I was dealing with petroleum jelly or petrolatum, uh, mineral oil, something along those lines. If I got out of the shower and my skin is still wet and I put something like that on there, it can help to seal in moisture, which is great for dry skin uh, because you're keeping moisture from escaping. However, common, you can do the same thing with an all-natural uh, oil like shea butter or something like that. So don't feel like that's your only option. That being said, it is not a moisturizer. Water is a moisturizer. Oil is an oil. Oil is a sealant. So especially something like grease or petrolatum, which is a naturally molecularly larger size, it doesn't absorb into the skin. It sits on the surface. In some ways that can be great, uh, especially like let's say if you're doing a twist out and the weather's a little questionable, things like that, having something like that on there that's going to be a better barrier of protection is excellent. If you're going swimming, this is the key time that I tell people use a grease or use petroleum. If you're going swimming, coat that hair. It prevents the, the chlorine from drying you out as much because there's literally a barrier between your hair and that chlorinated water. So when you go home and you shampoo, you're not having to try to put back so much because of all of the uh, things I've been able to strip and pull from your hair. I hope that makes sense. I feel like a mind today. There's so many hand motions. That's what grease is and what grease does. Uh, and it's what it does well. Now I will say if you're going to use grease for that, I don't have an issue with that, but you do need to incorporate a sulfate-based shampoo into your regimen. It doesn't mean that, like, I'm one where if you're shampooing your hair, you always shampoo at least twice. That's the reason why every bottle says lather, rinse, repeat. The first one is to remove some excess products, things like that. If you do not get a good lather off of a nickel size amount of shampoo, your hair is not clean. That's the rule of thumb. So if you are uh, using a sulfate-free shampoo, that's fine, but your first shampoo, if you've been using grease, petroleum, mineral oil, things like that, or even heavy silicones, you wanna make sure that you are using a sulfate-based shampoo as your first wash or your first shampoo, and then go in with your sulfate-free shampoo to remove off the stuff that's easier to remove and to restore moisture balance. Uh, if you are using grease as a sealant on either the skin or on the hair, I understand that. But also keep in mind there's a difference between dry scalp, between dandruff, between seborrheic dermatitis, between psoriasis, and between eczema. Grease is not going to help all of that. If you have dry scalp and you're putting that grease on while the scalp is still damp, it can help to seal moisture in. Grease is not going to increase your moisture balance. Even if it feels nice going on the scalp, it doesn't absorb in. It doesn't do a lot to really benefit the scalp like that. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just keep listening. Hopefully it'll it'll sink in a little deeper as we go. As just tra la la down the little uh, what is it? The little golden 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 brick road. What what road was it? The wonderful wizard of a golden brick. It's a golden brick road. I think I don't know. It doesn't matter. At any rate, let's talk. 
let's talk about Greece really quickly because one of the lies that I cannot stand about Greece is that it either moisturizes or that it makes your hair grow. Let's get down and debunk that for you. So one of the key things, if you're looking at any grease that says that it causes hair growth, it will tell you to apply a small amount to the fingertips and massage it into the scalp. Now, if grease is not the factor that's causing that hair to grow, what do you think is doing the business? It's the scalp massage. The benefit of scalp massage is the fact that you are uh, stimulating blood flow and circulation to those follicles. It allows you to bring the nutrients, things like that, that you're getting from your diet to that hair a bit easier. So that way you're able to benefit, you're able to see accelerated growth, things like that. Now, that's also contingent upon you eating a healthy diet or having a well-rounded diet full of vitamins, nutrients, and minerals that you need to thrive and survive. And no, I'm not one for hair vitamins. If you're going to take a vitamin, let it be something that deals with you holistically because if your hair is growing and your spleen falls out you're gonna wish you took some <laughs> my point is that when it comes down to it you need something that's going to help out for the whole body if it helps the whole it helps the hair as well if it only has the things you need for hair growth you're not giving yourself the things that you need for the rest of the body to thrive and to flourish and that's really not what you're needing a lot of times those hair vitamins nail vitamins skin vitamins whatever have massive doses of things that you're just filtering out anyway or either you're causing kidney stones or you're going to have some issues if it's a fat based or a fat soluble vitamin uh you can overdose on some of those so just be careful when it comes on the vitamin selection and always consult your doctor but if you're doing all that scalp massage is very much beneficial for hair growth but you can do that with literally any lubricating substance to include when you're in the shower conditioning your hair you can do the exact same thing Okay. When it comes down to like issues like, have you ever heard of people where they're saying like, oh, okay, well I have growing dandruff. It's usually those flakes that you can peel up off of the scalp. Um, and a lot of times I see people where they're greasing their scalp because they feel like, oh, okay, well I'm going to get dandruff, so on, so forth, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times in that instance, what you have is seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is a uh, inflammatory condition of the sebaceous glands. What that means in layman terms is that your oil glands are working too hard and they're causing issues with the skin and the skin production on the scalp. So you end up with uh, basically either keratosis where you've got to build up a keratin cells on the surface or you end up with um, just a mass of skin cells that is at that surface as a result of the overproduction. The oil there is the culprit. If that is the instance where you're peeling up flakes with a comb, something like that, please do not use hair grease or any other oil on your scalp. Keep in mind, your scalp produces its own oil. You don't need to assist it in most instances. There are some instances where it can be helpful, but like for instance, my scalp is dry, but it's also naturally oily. I cannot put oils on the scalp. It makes matters worse. And I already look like I fried chicken with my face. Like, let's calm this mess down. If you have something like eczema or psoriasis, you can use an oil on the scalp, but I would really rather you use something that's all natural, that's infused with vitamin E, things like that, something like shea butter, coconut oil, something that is able to absorb to some degree into the skin and benefit the skin rather than just sit on the surface. Um, but especially like if you're high porosity, if you have... Uh, 4C hair that's prone to single strand knots, things like that. Grease and uh, your petroleum based oils, uh, mineral oil, things like that can be very helpful in preventing that hair from knotting. It can be very helpful in preventing you from losing moisture. So it does have its benefit, but you have to know how to couple it in your routine correctly. I'm not telling you don't use it at all. But what I am telling you is if you use it, number one, use it with wisdom. Number two, use it with the right shampoo afterwards. Other than that, you should be pretty good. You should be safe. I'm not one that's down for greasing down hair and then pressing it out. That's literally like frying chicken and your hair is not a chicken. If you feel any degree of sizzle on hair while you flat iron, boo boo. Something's wrong. Hair is not supposed to sizzle when you flat iron it. Calm that mess down. If you have any further questions about grease or about petroleum-based oils, mineral oils, things like that, please leave them down in the comment box below. I hope that this video has been informative and not seeming like I'm lecturing you too much. I just want to make sure that we get everything across. So, yeah. Um, until next time, you guys, take care, God bless, and stay glam. You know I love you, boo. And if you want to see more of what's going on behind the scenes and between the scenes, you can go ahead and check us out at 
get glam fam on uh, Instagram <laughs> your audio on YouTube and that way you can go ahead and keep up with all of the shenaniganery that goes on with us on a regular basis as well as being knowing what type of videos are coming up things like that until next time you guys take care God bless and stay glam you know I love you boo bye